Hello, my name is Shaheen Rabbani, also known as Amir Hossein Rabbani. I'm a physics programmer at La Forge R and the Ubisoft Montreal. I'm presenting our latest work on real-time fluid simulation using a novel method called Poisson filters. This is a work in progress in collaboration with Sofian Khiyad, who is a former Ubisoft employee. So, what is the problem that we are trying to solve? As you know, there are many PC and console games with a significant use of fire and smoke in their scenes. However, most of those effects are not simulated in real time and rather pre-made as animation loops. This means they can't respond to the environmental forces like wind or collision with objects. The main reason is that the fluid simulation is notoriously expensive. Our goal is to have a, a real-time fluid simulation that meets our tight computational budgets as well as artistic visual quality criteria. At La Forge, we are working on Torch 2.5D, which is a 2D fluid simulation in a 3D scene. We have developed techniques to accelerate the pipeline, uh, a system that allows for reinterpreting the 3D forces in, a, in the uh, 2D simulation space, as well as a number of rendering techniques to create a 3D illusion. How do we accelerate the pipeline? We build on Joseph Stamp's stable fluid algorithm. In the traditional pipeline, a big chunk of the computation is spent on a single projection step that uses iterative Jacobi solver. For example, for a typical iterative value of 32, almost 83% of the total computation is spent on projection. This is the bottleneck that we would like to improve. Compared to Jacobi, our method achieves 20 times faster projection and 4 times faster pipeline, both on PC and Xbox, without any noticeable visual difference, as you see here. Let's see how we do it. In the Navier-Stokes equation, we have the zero divergence condition on the velocity field that ensures the, uh, the fluid remains incompressible. One way to solve this is through the Helmholtz-Hodge decomposition theorem that tells us that the divergence of the velocity can be corrected by subtracting the gradient of the resulting pressure field. To solve this, first we need to solve for uh, the pressure using the Poisson equation where W is a divergent, velo divergent velocity. To solve the pressure Poisson equation using the Jacobi solver, we form a linear system uh, x equals b, then decompose a into lower and upper triangles and a diagonal matrix, and then iteratively get better estimates for the unknown x through this up to the step. The benefit of this approach is that we don't have to explicitly compute the inverse of the Laplacian. Also, Jacobi is highly parallelizable and hence GPU friendly. In coding, it actually translates to something very simple. Given the divergence d for n iterations and for each pixel, we update the pressure value of the central cell using its four neighbors. While the inner loop is a small kernel on GPU and very fast, the CPU cycle makes it very slow. So let's see how we can get rid of the CPU side. If you look closely at the opted step, you would notice a recursive structure where x k plus 1 always depends on its previous value, while everything else remains constant. So we can analytically compute the convolutional kernel that exactly matches the target Jacobi iteration. This effectively replaces the iterative solver with one-time convolution. If you visualize Jacobi iterations, you would see as the iteration goes up, the central cell uh, gets more and more information from farther cells, and therefore our kernel, kernel grows in space. So for example, for iteration 3, our kernel would look like something like this. And these are different visualizations of the kernel to give you a better idea of how it looks. As the iteration number increases, we get better and more smooth approximation of the kernel. Now, having that kernel, we can convolve the divergence to get the pressure we need for the projection step. That's good. There is a problem though. The full kernel is a dense matrix that is expensive, especially for a high number of iterations. What we can do instead is to replace it with several filters. This turns the ON score complexity into a linear complexity for any rank one matrix, but we can easily see our Poisson kernel is not rank one. This makes us think of a kernel reduction to reduce it to rank one. To do this, we can perform singular value decomposition. While a more familiar decomposition gives three matrices U, sigma, and V transpose, we can instead see it from a different angle that is canonical polyadic decomposition, or CPD for short, which is expressing the matrix as a sum of rank one matrices. We can then compute the separate filters for each one to be the outer product of two vectors. In our case, we're just happy with the largest singular value, so we just go for the decomposition of the first rank one matrix. 
Back to our equation, we perform CPD, plug in pressure and divergence, and we get our rank one Poisson pressure equation with the vertical and horizontal convolutional filters. And if you look at the, the total variance explained by our uh, filters, they apply to pretty much on about 83% as the attrition goes to infinity, which is quite sufficient as you will see in the results. Here is a reconstruction of the kernel using the filters uh, they just saw. And also you can see the difference, which is quite a small if you look at the scale. Is that all? No, it turns out we can do more. If you look at the filters, you can see about 80% of the values are very small, so we can further reduce the filter size by truncating them. So for example, for Jacobi32, what we have now are two convolution filters, one horizontal and one vertical, where most of the numbers are truncated. The interesting thing is, the remaining parts are very much symmetrical. So all we need to do is using these seven numbers in our shader code for the Poisson pressure. We then perform two convolutional passes on the divergence and use the results to correct the velocity. It's a simple code, fast, and there is no CPU involved. Here you can see comparison of the computed pressure to the ground truth, which is the Jacobi solution where the error is quite small. To make sure our method doesn't damage the structural properties of the fluid, we also compare the divergence before and after correction. As you see, the results are closely matching the ground truth, especially when we look at the SSIM, which is the structural similarity index, we see very little difference between the two. As for the cause, the separate filters scale much better with higher iterations than the Jacobi solver. For example, for 100 iterations, uh, Jacobi solver takes uh, more than 1000 microseconds, while our filters take about 35 microseconds. Okay, how to bring this fast 2D simulation into a 3D scene? As you see, if we just place a 2D simulation into a 3D scene, as we move the camera, it looks 2D, of course. What we have done is to combine a number of methods to dynamically adjust the transformation of the fire, both in the UV space and in the uh, 3D uh, to make it reactive to the camera. This way we create the illusion of a 3D fire from the POV of the camera. You can see here, for example, how the simulation looks plausible in 3D from the POV of the camera by making it invariant to translation and rotation of the camera. We we'll also have a system to reinterpret any 3D forces, whether com coming from wind, motion, or collision, and turn it into a 2D force in the UV space by a combination of force projection methods and purely noise for the missing dimension. We use this system to create this wind box for the artist where he can control the wind strength, gauss, and global direction. The main feature is a persistence of the global wind direction as the camera moves. This persistence is quite important as the 2D simulation is constantly changing orientation with the camera motion. We can take the wind system to achieve motion effects. This is essentially the same problem if you think of a moving torch in a windless environment to be a static in a windy scene. We can also collide with 3D objects through depth buffer analysis. To do that, we transform the depth buffer into uh, the, the screen space and extract the normals by Laplacian edge detection. This method only takes uh, 7 microseconds and is quite accurate as you see in this video. Let's see what uh, an artist can control. There are two ways to generate fire in the smoke, manual and automatic. In the manual way, we use up to six different DDS masks and blend them based on the camera angle. In the automatic way, we use the same technique as 3D collision to slice any visible mesh in the scene and set it on fire. Uh, there is still room for improvement for this method as the generated mask is sensitive to the camera motion. That's something we are working on right now. The artist can also achieve many different physical behaviors through parameter tuning and scripting. For example, the artist can achieve uh, a candle look by applying a negative vortice of the confinement value as you see in the middle video. So what's next? This is a work in progress. Right now, we are working on computing Poisson filters for 3D simulation. We are also working on using uh, more than rank one for higher qualities with an automatic rank selector that settles the, the, the cost versus quality trade-off. Uh, also, we are adapting our method to solve for viscous diffusion as it also has the Laplacian term and it is even more expensive than projection. Thanks for watching.